you very much, uh, Professor Namrata, for uh, kind introduction. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that, yes, uh, I really enjoyed working with you. I, I think uh, we do uh, many things, <clears throat> many innovative things we work upon. And uh, I know that many of them are in pipeline. I really, I, I must, I, I must uh, uh, appreciate your uh, extended help in most of our approaches. And I'm very happy to, uh, to, to give this lecture too. So let's, let's, uh, I'm just keeping my lecture very, very uh, different. And I'm not just getting into the hardcore patenting and there, uh, Dr. Chitra, Dr. Banushri, they would be talking about other aspects of it. I wanted to keep it very light. <clears throat> the students who come talk to me uh, from IPR division of uh, Yings, I always feel that they are lagging few things, especially how to, how to figure out an innovation. So what is something we call a science? And uh, as Dr. Rohit Shetty rightly said, yeah, they just go uh, go and publish or uh, just go and present it at a conference, come with an award, very happy about it, or publish a paper. I mean, that's why we settle with that. But how do we translate it into an opportunity? I mean, as exactly Dr. Mahipal Sajseva really said that, he touched the real point of it. And many a times that, uh, that we lost some good innovations just because we went and put the knowledge outside. So always that, the innovation, I, we, the way we look at innovation is that it's just like there is an unmet need and we are trying to meet the unmet need by a way through which it can be, it can brought into public use. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Something as, some, as small as, uh, as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can ultimately cause a typhoon off where on the world. This is what a popular chaos theory is all about. And of course, ripple effect are also same. See, for a long time, we always thought that chaos theory is always a chaos. We never bothered that there could be a science behind it. But today, with the help of cybernetics, network theories and AI-based algorithms, associations or neural networks, now it's possible for us to understand about this effect. And a ripple effect, definitely, it's, it's creating, but how much it is contributing towards a bigger waves, have a small change in one state of a deterministic nonlinear system, can result in a larger difference in the later state. This is what about chaos theory, and but, but now we understand and we try to optimize. For example, sometime back, uh, there was a popular question that uh, can, uh, can a dancing peacock can bring rain? This is something that you know people always just bother about it. I mean, this is such a foolish belief that a peacock, that the dancing peacock could bring a uh, rain. Yes, that's what we thought about it, right? What is this all about that? A weatherman uh, today, he could be the better printer, that's what I feel. But uh, yes, there is a link. They thought it could be uh, a rudimentary or some sort of, uh, you know, a, a, a false belief, but that's not true. It's having, it's having its own replications. The peacock, when it dances or it vocalizes, it's always considered as a mating call. And it happens exactly before rain. Now we understand that. It shows that the peacock is recognizing something which a weatherman recognizes. Probably a drop in uh, pressure, uh, a drop in temperature or humidity. Humidity, everything is contributing factor towards the prediction of this. A BBC algorithm, which is having about 90 parameters to put together to predict a rain at a particular place. So what we thought a dancing peacock, the peacock is dancing for a mate call for a reason that it is anticipating rain and the rain will bring the worms and uh, a small insects will be I mean, will be hatching out, and, and that will be a good place for the breeding uh, for the young. Uh, uh, the uh, when the uh, when the uh, peahens when they when they just give link birth to uh, when they lay hens, and uh, when the the small ones when they come out, they will be able to feed on them. So it's not that something that we always think of that some foolish thing is happening, some foolish beliefs, but there is something behind it. Yeah, the, maybe the eardrums of the peacock are sensitive for air pressure around, and how is it sensing? It's yet, yet to know. There is nothing very uh, uh, super science about it, but we need to understand what is happening around. So this is a, this picture of C. V. Raman is always uh, you know uh, fascinates me. Uh, the C. The C. V. Raman said one thing: history of science has always shown that a real fundamental progress is always due to those who has ignored the boundaries and treated science as a whole. Today we saw I'm an ophthalmologist, I'm a pharmacologist, I'm an anesthetist, I'm a cardiologist. But together when I think that, when you are looking together, then we'll be able to create it. 
it's not that only iits will create it we are we are we are capable of but we need to think that i mean we think that a science as a whole not some domain specific see what happens is this just see the cv raman speak the cv raman is standing standing out standing on the table standing next to a table where the back blackboard just behind him is having the structure of retina a, a physicist hardcore physicist was highly interested in retina to understand the functions when he was alive about 100 years back that we had no knowledge about it. so now what happened i'm coming back to the same thing as uh, uh, professor mahipal said that you published paper in high impact journals what impact it has made on my life a common man is asking this question i have contributed to your free education i have contributed to your expertise in return what you have given to me is something like if you are publishing a paper you are harming more than the top you are trying to patent it this is what is all about it although that it is very difficult for you to understand but that is a thing all about what is an innovation innovation is something that you recognize an unmet need when an unmet need comes up it's an opportunity the opportunity you try to address the problem address the a problem that to meet the unmet need and making something which making it available so when you just addressing a problem it is also your responsibility to make it available for the person who is in need of it or what we try to do is that we try to uh, push an hypothesis to simplifying the requirement that basically that what you try to do is that you anticipate a problem and try to work for it so i divide innovation into type, two types so what is the uh, uh, what ultimately is going to reach is that the creativity plus work that is leading towards innovation the invention and innovation they are differing a little slightly innovation is defined as the introduction of something new or different in the act of innovating lead to the introduction of new ideas device and methods invention if you just like to split this word in venting the process or device are some ideas you are trying to vent out something which is uh, which is something in the as a process or a device but innovation is something that what has been vented out in which you are trying to bring a, no a novelty that novelty is going to suffice for example this is this is what a small thing which i could just think about it a farmer in india is always in need of uh, you know bore wells to pump water out so the biggest problem when i was a kid my father was supposed to go and operate a, a water pump at the uh, farm yard at the time that it is exactly we used to get electric power at 2 o'clock in the midnight or in the early morning we used to get electric uh, electricity electricity so going at 2 o'clock switching on and coming back sometime you won't get electricity at 2 o'clock also today a small innovation somebody has made it which really attracted me that a simple mobile phone just give a click it switches on the motor at somewhere at a different different distance i mean probably it is away from them today i mean mobile towers are much more richer i mean much more reaching than that of human human being or, or through transports so he switch it on switches it on and switches it off so it's something that you know this is how an unmet need is 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 addressed as a, in the form of innovation what exactly it makes it is that someone makes it happen and others wonder how it has happened this is what our all elevation is all about the small insert here it shows that the state of mind a rainy day a person is carrying an umbrella in in normal umbrella like you and me when we are carrying it but really somebody wanted to harvest water then this is the way how he tilts his umbrella and he makes the uh, the stem of the uh, umbrella to collect water so this is only thing is that how he placed the umbrella on the other way around that what that's what the innovation is all about so what is something like you're looking beyond if an innovation is unidentified it is blind to see the one is blind to see the opportunity you 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 will always call somebody as blind in ophthalmology the blind blindness means something different as we understand very well but in innovation if it is unidentified that means that the person is blind to see the opportunity very interesting so we have two types of innovations one is our inductive reasoning another one is deductive reasoning one is that you observe something and there is an unmet need and you go for identifying the problem and addressing the problem is inductive reasoning but the other way around is that like us we give a topic to a, a student and the student go for predicting it and he does an experiment and he come out with something uh, something to solve it so this is deductive reasoning so in both the cases you are trying to solve a problem by trying to bring the innovation so let me just tell you something very interesting i think when i was a small boy i think most of you of my age definitely must have seen this toy right 
can you believe that this toy has got a us patent <laughs> more indian toy i think i have seen in my childhood my father told me when he played when he was young so that you see that you are spatting sitting on it i mean let me just try to tell you that the most fascinating discovery which came from i mean innovation came from the stanford stanford university the stanford university put this very proudly it's paper heavy from a technical spec point of view we can match centrifuges that cost all the way from 1000 to 5000 dollars but this is a tool that requires no electricity no infrastructure you can carry them around in your pockets for a price point of 20 cents we call it a paper fuge it's essentially a piece of paper and we put in uh, small holders for capillaries that we can fill with blood and we have standard string and we take two pieces of either pvc pipe or wooden handles and then you just pull on it gently as you spin the disc is uh, rotating back and forth it's rotating in an oscillatory fashion and there's a moment when the disc is stationary and then it starts to unwind and go in the other direction as you apply a force with this set of principles we're able to essentially make a centrifuge that spins all the way to 120000 rpm and 30000 g forces in the lab we can separate and pull out malaria parasites from blood we can separate uh, filaria african sleeping sickness separate blood plasma it is an ultra low cost centrifuge that's built out of principles of a very old toy the whirly gig this is a toy that i used to play with as a kid the puzzle was that i didn't know how fast this would spin and so i got intrigued and i set this up on a high speed camera and uh, i couldn't believe my eyes this thing when you heard the noise is actually going at 10 to 15000 rpm to me that seemed like what we wanted to actually make a centrifuge before us nobody had actually understood how this toy works so we spent a significant portion of this time truly understanding the mathematical phase space for how you can convert linear motion into rotational motion there's some beautiful mathematics hidden inside this object There is a value in this whimsical nature of searching for solutions because it really forces us outside our own sets of constraints of what a product should actually look like. The centrifuge is the workhorse of any laboratory from diagnostics to biology and if you build a very essential a key instrument then you open up to a whole different variety of applications. We just got back from Madagascar. We took the tool uh, out to the field to work with health workers and we're starting a clinical validation trial on a larger scale to share it with the community and the healthcare service providers, get the feedback. So it's a very iterative cycle. There is of the order of a billion people around the world that live with absolutely no infrastructure, no roads, no electricity. So for us, the inspiration is to make the simplest possible tools that do the job well such that you can get them distributed around the world now oh, this is an example i thought of quoting it that for just an idea how it has converted into a, a centrifuge which calls a paper fuge and which can run to the speed of 120000 rpm under 38000 g that's something remarkable that. that's something which came out of it only thing is that the way you try to think of you don't need a fancy laboratory to do all these things sometimes what we call as jugad something there is no equivalent word in english for jugad but jugad is the innovation and when when i just try to explain students and this paper came in nature it was subsequently got an award also now they that that's how you know so when you just i want to show you something else also i think all of you remembering this drug this this plant called datura which was there been in indian uh, indian civilization for a long time 
and it is there in our vedic scripts too and the datura is something like for uh, it was used in ayurveda for to treat lungs and throat for a long time and you know this fascinating story behind it i must tell you it is offered to lord shiva in shivaratri so we know there is some sort of a cultural attachment is there in 1802 a british physician and an asthmatic uh, he was asthmatic james uh, james anderson visited india with a british physician during british rule he he got a severe attack of asthma so he went to an ayurvedic physician he gave this cigarette to smoke that is datura cigarette to smoke so immediately he got the relief of datura and he gone back to england and shared with dr sims in edinburgh so they published in edinburgh uh, medical and surgical journal and it was it is suddenly it has become very popular in europe about uh, now it's about 200 years back but therefore you know they really forgotten that but you see that after several years this cigarette was available in 1894 this cigarette was available throughout england and as well as in uh, europe and uh, you know slowly slowly the name of indian cigarette has gone and uh, people have started giving their own names and you will you will be surprised to see in 1966 uh, the ipratropium bromide was a chemical substance which was derived which is same to the top scopolamine what we see in datura see the chemical structures of both of them it was patented then it came in an all together new canister as i inhaler uh, to us back now i mean what do you think about it that something that it was there in our civilization it was there in our medical system we lost it and we completely lost the traces also but when we just dig it back we come to know that well the origin of it similarly that therefore we need to look into all thing all systems more holistically than considering oh this is not allopathy this is ayurveda this is siddha we should not look into that for a, for a, for a, for an innovative mind everything is an opportunity look at this thing an evacuation chair was designed a simple chair in which somebody fixed a belt in the in the uh, belt roller on the bottom of the chair and this chair was used to, to bring the patients from uh, from uh, in the through the staircase during emergency especially when the stable, when, the, when the time of uh, fire and other things so this evacuation chair is a patent of somebody a company is striker and now it is sold for the price of 3840 dollars i think i just seen it sometime back in the exhibition so the idea is economy for the country the more and more you innovate the more and more you patent the more and more you bring it to business the more and more foreign currency you get because of it or even local currency which to reduce the i mean uh, uh, the utilization of foreign currency that is going to build up the nation for example this buckle what you see here was a small buckle which we used to use it in the aeroplane and you know that the patent is sitting on this buckle so it's something like whatever you think of simplifying a process you see the innovation there and there is a patent as professor mayapal sir sir said that yes there is an algorithm i mean when we send the copyrights copyright trademark i think dr chitra will talk about all these things i am not going to cover it but what i am telling you is that when you have an idea of bringing a software the software you then you know, always the software cannot be patented in the normal way but we have the innovative ways to do that it can get into copyright it can get into trademark it can be all if you try to figure out an algorithm algorithm you cannot publish an algorithm you cannot patent an algorithm but the embed the algorithm in a software and you can patent it and you see that adobe photoshop you can see all these guys who over there in the copyright so this is how you try to protect your innovation in any way it come come it comes in so how the innovations are game changer just i wanted to show you this glimpse i think you would have forgotten the uh, the tiktok ban which causes immediate 6 billion loss for the chinese company but you remember that it was started by a microsoft employee a uh, bitans in march 2012 and zang launched a first mobile app and the day powered mobile app has subsequently been i mean subsequently purchased another would call musically now it has become i mean within few months it has become you know it's a huge uh, 200 million subscribers and it turned out to be a tiktok in august 2018 and which gained such a subsequent uh, 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 financial income and which could threaten every big giants throughout the world facebook netflix and netflix spotify youtube all of them are using inbuilt algorithm the moment you search something on your google immediately you have been profiled and you know the moment you talk in front of your mobile you will get a, a intimation that you are you are you, are, you are talk about that you want to go to paris and you will you will start getting some advertisement that the ad fast was paris so ai has been embedded in everything 
So in ophthalmology, A is having a bigger role to play. And there are several applications when they come to it, they're all targeting ophthalmology. And uh, recently, the announcement of Google for retinal diseases, A for retinal diseases is one of the uh, key findings. So the innovation in ophthalmology is something not new. It's, it goes dates back to you know, 1300. Venetian crystal makers were given a special uh, provision for making the glasses. The spectacles were made by them. And uh, the, whomever has invented or inno innovated these things have been given a special consideration. So people always say that. No, that's not the first thing in optics when it comes to optics. The glass comes into picture, and the first part, first is some sort of exclusive right goes 1300. Ever since you see so many developments happening in the patenting process, but something that you know in ophthalmology, we have several avenues open for uh, for uh, for innovations. Especially whenever you look into the uh, I mean uh, eye oils, there are several eye oils that, that I could see many of them are just about to this technology is supposed to come into market. So well, when it case of surgery, yes, ophthalmology always considered as a surgical discipline, and see that when it comes to surgery also that there are many, many instruments and technologies which are inbuilt today. When you just look at the type of lasers which have been used and the type of the, the optics which have been used and automation which has been used, it's, it's, it's showing several possibilities of utilizing it. When you just simply search ophthalmoscope, you will get 200 patterns sitting on ophthalmoscope alone. A femtosecond laser uh, lentotomy, which is something recently which made by a German company, that is that developing a steering wheel or a cutting pattern on the lens to reduce the elasticity for plus biopia is something that in surgical discipline, I mean, although that, you know, it's not made by scalpel, but instead of scalpel, it has been made by, by using laser. But what, what I'm trying to say is that a surgery also is possible to get into innovation and the innovation can be patent, patented by a way. So, so it's, uh, the dimension of innovation in ophthalmology with uh, intellectual property right which when you just look into the overall picture, formulation and drug, drug formulation come to be 19.4%, and glaucoma is a maximum up to 30%, or 27%, equally retinal diseases. Dry and stray inflammation is about 15.8, all others contribute to about 5%. These are all the innovations being filed in the United Patent Office. And many of them like, you know, the Lacri set, Lacri set, Vitri set, I'm not going in detail about all these things. But these are all coming as an innovative products into this. Yeah, the drugs are old. We are not putting any new drug. Uh, the polymers are not something which is which is new. But the way through which it has been done and it has been uh, it has been patented before it has been went for clinical trials or publishing papers that made all of them possible. If you publish, you lose it. That's what we want to say again. Next one, a very small thing which I wanted to share, share which is that a, a, a small uh, speculum. See that our small innovation has come into the speculum. Whenever you put a speculum, you always get a reflected light on, on, on the cornea. Now, when you just see that, they put a small light above it, which is a slit lamp fitted spe speculum, revealing uh, previously unseen anatomical details, which also eliminating reflected microscope glass. So very small instrument. I think it looks like a small Chinese product, which is having a couple of battery and an LED. And you see that, that has come as an, is a, come as a, as an innovation in ophthalmology. So there's a US patent sitting on it in 2018. For a small of this innovation, you see in the next couple of years, it will be coming into your clinic. Similarly, that binocular uh, optical coherence tomography uh, uh, imaging. So the publications are continuously going, sorry, the patents are continuously going up in this area. Now, one of the most hot topic right now is eyeball tracker innovations. Eyeball tracker innovation, whenever I just look into this, I always feel that well, this is used for several indications, for market research, usability research, packaging research, human uh, factors and simulations are playing video game and uh, psychological research or attempt, I mean, uh, for other medical research. But I always feel that in ophthalmology, it can have a better uh, use. But I yet to see somebody is working for uh, strabismus or other ocular movements. I mean, this is yet to be explored for in these areas. But Apple wins a key pattern reflecting the eye tracker, smart glasses. Just recently, we got information. To some extent, I just want to put you one slide about the innovations we came across. Right? This is something like the one which is soluble natamycin eye drop is the one which we created some time back. Now it is patent granted. Animal studies and human studies we are completely published, and uh, I, 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 I thank my colleague Dr. Nabrata Nabrata for helping me that uh, to come out with this, and she's uh, one of the co-patentee in this uh, uh, in this innovation. 
Next is Natamatrix again, and another brainchild of Professor J. Stityal. I mean, we could give the shape for it. It is a drug eluting implantable wafers. The patent granted. Now we are going ahead with other trials. The next one is that the eye drop for uh, uh, postmenopausal dry eye. This again patent granted. This next one is our one of the key one that is the transcon trial eye drop technique with US patent. This is a small simple technique to transfer to make the drugs available for uh, all the places where we the NRP center. We have the luxury of having a pharmacy and giving all the drugs immediately. But the same thing is not available for many of the ophthalmology clinics. Therefore, this innovation will enable that kind of things possible. They can get any damn drug in any corner of India. So how much a protection I get out of innovation? See, look, I just don't want to exaggerate the figures. There was a patent infringement. You know how much was the amount settled between for patent infringement? 370 crores between two <laughs> instruments. They got 370 crore settlement. So that, that in the same type of you know, protection you get for your innovation, if it is being copied by somebody. So only thing is that before publishing, you should think of getting, if there is an innovation, you should apply for intellectual property rights, then immediately go for publication. Ocular diseases are dealt very, very, the innovation in ocular diseases are very rare. And uh, in, I contribute to about 1% of the clinical trial registered in FDA registry. This has gone down, it has not increased so far. So at avenues for innovation in ophthalmic sciences come from different areas, like drug, drug delivery systems, surgical aids, diagnostic agents, uh, um, uh, diagnostic diagnostic instruments, diag uh, diagnostic aids, uh, societal innovations, intelligent readouts, software embedded algorithms, all inculcate. I mean, all what you need is that you have to inculcate out of box thinking to make all these things possible. The unmet need gives an opportunity and it gives an innovation. Once if we come out with the idea or concept, make a working model in the lab scale process, make a prototype in a, in a small prototype. At this time, you'd make a partner. Commercial interest with a, with the investment I will take from angel investors or from ventures. I think uh, uh, it will be dealt separately. How to take it further and the production of marketing in which you have to make a lot of contracts. You have to you have to preserve. You know, one of my uh, one of our colleague in Ames uh, just went and just casually talked to somebody and he made the patent and he started a company. He floated the product, but this this one of the faculty came and told me that. Say, look, sir, I went and discussed with them and we, I, this guy is doing like this. See, because that contract has not been made between them. So there are some couple of things to protect your interest. I think that will be uh, dealt with subsequent speakers. I'm not going into it. The government of India is encouraging so much about startup and innovation. Innovation is always unlimited. I have a small, you know, just for a, just I want to say something. The innovation is always something that you just try to put something to for a special use. This guy is using helmets to avoid uh, the, the irritation of the eye, irritation of the eye. And this other innovation is having mobile phone in the helmet. Well, so this is a nice way that I know how somebody has created a basket as a, as a transport service. And this is most innovative one that now you cannot, you instead of you know using all cattle, now you have something else. And even if your uh, two wheeler is stolen that you may find somewhere pumping water in the farmer's farmyard. And see this guy has found an innovative way to cool his drink for the evening. And this is a more ultimate one that he, now he can get into a temple to pray comfortably, locking the chapels outside the temple. That, that's something very innovative. This is, he is owning a Maruti car, but he just need a, he just only doing it on a cycle. So these are all very small innovations. Say another guy has got a hot water, uh, simple hot water innovation. So these are all just for fun, right? Uh, just uh, out among all, the most interesting one is this. I mean that, uh, the last one is that, I just show you, uh, this is the most innovative one. He found a formula to, to keep his uh, wife as well as mother-in-law happy by, by putting them together on the back of his uh, bike at the same time. There's something like to put you uh, uh, with a light mind about innovation. So to in nutshell that, if you want to say that one who acquires knowledge and then passes it to others, gets all his wishes fulfilled and achieves the success of happiness and prosperity in his life. This is what quoted in Adarva Vida. So with this, I am just ending this talk of innovation. Innovation always out of box thinking. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.